Have you ever been amazed by the complex code behind 3D projects on Scratch? Well, what if I told you that all of those 3D Scratch projects all revolve around one 3D engine? It's so simple that anyone could make it in less than five minutes. In this video, I will guide you step by step on how you can create this engine for yourself. And by the end of this video, you will understand how 3D projects work on Scratch. So the first thing you want to do is create a new sprite and draw a little square. Import pen when flag clicked. Set pen size to 2. Forever erase all. Pen down. And then add 4 go to blocks with the numbers that are on the screen. Let's test it. Well the problem is the square doesn't really move. So let's create two variables. Camera X and camera Y. We're also going to create a custom block. Go to X, input X, and then Y, input Y. Run without screen refresh, and then define it as go to X times input X and Y times input Y. And then you can simply replace the go to blocks with the new custom block. Camera X and Y are the coordinates of the actual square itself and the input x is just the changing the position. Now if we change our variables to sliders and change the range, then we have a square that moves across the screen. And if you didn't notice, the little top line keeps on moving around. We can fix this by adding a go to negative 20 and 20 custom block right here, and then adding a pen up block. Nice. But now comes the fun part, adding 3D. Now since we're dealing with three dimensions, we need a new input, input Z, and a new variable, camera Z. Oh, by the way, Z is just another name for Z. It just sounds cooler, so I use it. But what actually does Z stand for? In short, the Z axis is the depth. So if this was Z0, then this would be Z1, 2, and 3, and so on. Just like whenever you go farther away from something, it gets smaller. So now the X coordinate will equal X plus camera X divided by Z plus camera Z. But why is that the case? Well, if you look over to our square right here, we can see that the bigger that the value of Z gets, the smaller the square gets and our little dot is slowly getting to the center of the screen. And because we're dividing, the number will get smaller, making the square smaller, which is exactly what we want. Now it's the same thing for Y, so let's fix the code. Now if we run the project, we can see that, well, we can't see the square. So we have to multiply it by some kind of input, which is FOV, field of view. Field of view is basically how much of something you can see. So the higher the field of view, the more you can see, the less, the less you can see. So let's add our code FOV times 0 0.5 times our big chunk of all that code. And the same for Y. Also in all the custom blocks, set the Z to 1. And then you can set the field of view to 50. Now one thing I really don't like is whenever you change the Z axis, it moves in huge chunks. So let's come over to the code and add a simple times camera Z by 0.1. This will make the cam Z a little smaller, making it move in smaller steps. So now the square moves smoothly whenever we decrease the Z value. And the only thing left to do is to make it draw a cube. Here is the code for my drawing the cube. Of course, you can make any coordinates that can make any shape you want to. And you can also add controls to move your square. So here is the finished project. I hope your project went well and it works. If you have any problems, just comment them down below and comment down your thoughts. And if you have any questions, also comment them. 
Also, I'd really like it if you subscribe because as of now, I only have 88 subscribers, which is really small, and I'd really like the support. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Things to add in the future would probably be adding textures to the shapes, exporting and importing shapes using lists, and better camera movement like rotation. But these are things for a different tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you want more tutorials like this and I'll see you in the next one.